I'm going back to version 1.1 to collect all of the super flat unobtainables, mainly rabbits. They were removed in version 1.9 and I want rabbits in my world. But first, I have to get started. Oh, this is gonna be tough. <laughs> with not much in sight, I killed a few sheep, a pig, picked a direction and stuck with it, hoping to find a village. Oh, is that a blacksmith? Oh, that's perfect. At the village, I broke a few logs, made a crafting table, wooden pickaxe, broke some stone, made some stone tools and got some bread. Ah, oh, finally, I'm not gonna starve. The blacksmith didn't have much apart from boots and a pickaxe. From the wool I got earlier, I could craft a bed. Wait, first night survived. Oh yeah, baby. Things were going pretty well. However, for some reason, the villagers were acting weird. What? Why won't the villager trade? Like I'm pressing the button, but the menu won't come up. Oh my gosh, you're joking. Villager trading was added in 1.3.1. I'm on 1.1. So you just can't trade with these villager guys? That's so weird. Without much choice, and that I've already ransacked the majority of this village, I went searching for more villages to loot. Oh, there we go. That was really quick. Oh my gosh. The loot was okay. I mean, getting anything iron related is tough at the moment, so I'll take as much as I can get. And the obsidian I'll definitely need later. However, I spotted that in this village, all the farms were wheat farms. There were no carrots or potatoes at all. I actually saw the same in the last village, but I didn't think anything of it, putting it down to bad luck. But then, I I realized something. Oh, I think the reason why I haven't seen any other types of crops growing in villages is because they weren't added yet. There's only wheat. I kept looting as many villages as I could, and as fast as I could. Eventually, I had quite a lot of stuff on me, most notably iron, obsidian, and saplings. I really didn't want to lose any of it. Because of this, I wanted to store my stuff in a makeshift base, just for the time being. The next village we find is the one I'll stay at, I think. I looted the two blacksmiths again and put my bed down in one of them. This was gonna be my temporary base. Okay. One thing I haven't really mentioned is how annoying slimes are. I really tried to keep my cool earlier in the other villages but they are just so persistent and the sound they make it's not a pleasant sound really let's be honest there's so many of them this is actually silly how many slime there are here at this stage i wanted to make this village my home the first thing i did was block off any pathways and gaps slime could get into this little area of the village you know this was going to be my base I, I didn't want slime just getting in the way the second thing i did was make a villager farm which would double as an iron farm i made one in a previous video on version 1.4.2 and it was quite simple. You have to trap villagers in a box like this, put doors around the outside, which tricks the game into thinking they are all different houses. This makes the villagers want to breed. If we get 32 villagers, an iron golem should spawn. But the villagers were taking a while to start breeding, and I wasn't too sure why. They should be breeding already. I did some research, and it turns out villagers don't Read. And iron golems weren't even added to the game yet. They came out in version 1.2.1. I'm in version 1.1. This means that villagers are, to put it lightly, completely useless. They can't breed. They can't trade. They don't even make a sound when you hit them or make that stupid ha sound. At least that's somewhat entertaining. I was going insane. So I wanted to do something I knew would work. I got to work building a mob farm. Surely nothing can go wrong with this. Nothing did go wrong with this. It worked quite nicely, actually. <laughs> it also took up some of the mob calf with random mobs, meaning there was slightly less slime in the world, which I took as a massive victory. Oh, come on, not again. I saw some sheep and trapped them with a few pieces of wheat I had left over. Then I saw pigs in the distance and brought them over with wheat too, which was weird because, again, carrots weren't added to the game yet. Right, hopefully they won't despawn. Bread seemed to be the best way to get food in this version of Minecraft, so I set out making an outline for a massive wheat farm. I wanted this farm to last me forever, so it had to be big. I put some water in and accidentally lined up everything perfectly. No way! Oh, that's perfect! One, two, three. I had to double check and recount because I was so proud of myself. Oh, that's so good! I then tilled everything in the farm. This was for two reasons. One, it would save me from doing it later, and it would prevent mobs from spawning in the farm. After putting in all the seeds I had, I AFK'd letting the wheat farm grow. I tried doing a time lapse, but it didn't look as good as I thought it would. I don't know, it, it looks stupid. On a side note, you might notice how I have 39 levels of experience. It was probably from killing all the slime, like I've killed 
so many. I mean, look how many are below me right now. Oh my god, there's so many slime. Now that the farm had grown, I could destroy the crops and replant with any additional seeds I got to expand the farm. This farm has got so much more left to be covered. Holy moly. Now that I had some food, some armor, some weapons, and some obsidian, I figured it would be a good time to make a nether portal. Bam! There we go! The nether on 1.1 super flat. Oh yeah! Oh, this looks hideous. I know the textures look awful. Believe me, I know. But looking on the good side, I'm away from those slime, so at least it's somewhat peaceful here. I was hoping to see a nether fortress, because there, chests can spawn, and if I get lucky, I could get diamonds. I had a quick look around, but I couldn't see anything, so I bridged out. And I'm glad I did, because not only did I spot a fortress, but my portal was almost covered in lava. Oh. Soon, I spotted a second fortress. It felt like I had gotten incredibly lucky over the past few seconds. As I entered that first nether fortress I saw, I hoped that that luck stayed as I searched for the chests. Oh my god, this fortress is massive. I kept looking around the fortress, covering everything as tactically as I could, just so I don't go over the same corridors I've already been down. Chest. Bam. Bam. Dang it. How has there not been a chest? Seriously. But there were no chests here. It was like my luck had ran out. <gasps> no! Oh, that was a blunder, holy moly. I know, I absolutely scoured that fortress, but with no chests, I figured that must have been because of a bad fortress generation or something, and I just got unlucky. How have I searched the entire fortress and not found a single chest? Actually, quite impressive that I've managed to do that, actually. I went to the other fortress, but this one also had nothing. No chests at all. I spent a total of 30 minutes looking, which, in all fairness, doesn't sound like a long time, but when you're just aimlessly walking around the same corridors like this... For half an hour, it was boring. Now, one of two things were happening to me. Either I had been cursed with terribly bad luck, or something was up. I went on the Wikipedia page for Minecraft, and apparently, in this update, chests weren't added to fortresses yet. That, once again, shows how old this version of Minecraft is. Like, who would have thought that? So, I spent the next hour going village to village, looting blacksmiths, specifically for two diamonds. This would let me craft an enchanting table, so I could enchant my tools and weapons, just to make me stronger and faster. Are there any diamonds? Oh, there's one! After finding my first diamond, it didn't take long to find a second. Please! have a diamond. Bleed! Yeah! I had been running for about an hour and gotten 10,000 blocks away from my base, so I beelined it straight back home, and in doing so, I stumbled across more villages. Hey, oh my god, more diamonds! I'd see blacksmiths in the distance, and it's not like I'm gonna ignore them anytime soon. I may as well. Like, I've just got to look, just in case there's some more stuff that I need. Oh, some more diamonds. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have a stack in a minute. 13 diamonds is kind of insane. What did I do with these diamonds? Well, I made an enchanting table, as I said I would, a diamond sword, it was just too difficult not to, and a diamond block, which is probably the rarest thing I could get. This left me with one diamond, and I wasn't too sure what I was gonna do with it yet, so I just put it in my chest. And finally, I made a maxed out enchanting table to enchant my new diamond sword. A level 40 enchantment. I know, by the way, this will use every single level I have. Like, I'll be put to level one. This has got to be such a good enchantment. It's gotta be worth it. Are you joking? At this stage, I wanted to get all of the old achievements in the game. Most of them were pretty simple. I mean, one of them is just to open your inventory. Like, it couldn't get any easier than that. The first one I saw was making a wooden sword. And I should say, the way these achievements work is that once you complete it, you then unlock the next task. In this case, that was to kill a mob. Boom! Easy! Then shoot a skeleton from 50 meters away. This was quite awkward to set up. Oh. I took a skeleton from the mob farm, counted 50 blocks away, which was quite tough because slime kept getting in the way, and I also kept miscounting, but ignore that. Uh, I miscount, I miscounted, I miscounted. Once everything was ready, I could line up the shot. Locked in, locked in, locked in, target acquired, and fire. Oh! That was 
was so good! Oh, that was so good! And that completed one of the whole branches of achievements. Then I crafted a stone pickaxe. I couldn't believe I hadn't made one yet, that was weird. There was an achievement to catch and cook a fish, and this gave me a chance to decorate the area I was living in with a mini pond opposite my house. And within minutes, I got a fish and cooked it. Hey! Cow tipper was quite an easy achievement to get. I just had to find and kill a cow. Bam! Yes! So, okay, I think we've done every advancement we can do. Can't do that because we can't get saddles. They're like impossible to get. Also, I don't want to do that. Why would I want to fly a pig off a cliff? Can't make a cake because I can't get sugar. And I can't do any of these on the left, all because I can't smelt an iron ingot. It's not possible. There's no ores. I've tried other ways to get it, but it just won't unlock. One of the main reasons why I wanted to get these achievements was so I could get more familiar with this version of the game and know what I can and can't do. Similarly, I spent the next hour working on an emporium with every single block in the game. The first thing I got was all of the stone stuff, which was pretty easy, and there wasn't too much to get. Then the wood blocks, which was pretty simple because the only type of wood is oak, which really narrows down the number of blocks I needed to get. I used the red diamond, gold, and iron blocks with the crafting and decoration blocks next to them. There were some blocks I didn't really think about at first, like cauldrons, brewing stands, and mechanical blocks like iron doors, levers, pressure plates, and buttons. This, by the way, is the crafting recipe for buttons. I just thought that was weird. Also, wooden buttons weren't added to the game yet, which I also thought was weird. Using my very last diamond, I crafted a jukebox. Was it worth using my last diamond for this? Probably not, but I did it anyway. After that, I got some dyes for the sheep I got earlier, and I managed to get six types of wool. In the nether, there were also some blocks I could get, like netherrack, soul sand, glowstone, and nether bricks. With the final few blocks left, I turned this little outside area into a garden, showing all the different types of flowers, leaves, and mushrooms. After that, I took a mini break, expanding the farm a bit more. I tried doing another time lapse, but again, it, it kind of sucks. I don't know, is it me? It might, it might be me, I don't know. I added some decorations to the area I'm currently living at, but just take a second to listen to what it's like here. The slime are so loud. It's constant. I've been really trying to keep things upbeat, but seriously, these guys are driving me insane. I would kill them, which, you know, would make it quiet for a bit, but seconds later, they'd come back, sometimes even more than last time. This was my final straw. I had to leave this place and go somewhere peaceful with no slimes in sight. I took some blocks and went a considerable distance away from my base and made a random outline with dirt for what will be an island. Then I got some water and with just one bucket, I was going to make an ocean surrounding the island. But according to my theory, this shouldn't be too difficult. I might regret saying that, I, d I really hope not, I don't know. Very quickly, I had an outline for an island and water surrounding me. Not a slime in sight. It's so peaceful. There's a few slimes in the distance, but they won't get over here. You can't see right now, but I am grinning cheek to cheek. This is... This is gonna be nice. But I'll admit it, this place kinda sucked. I mean, it was just a bit of dirt, really. So I got to work making outlines for hills. This is so I would know what the hills would look like and was happy with them before going all in and actually placing the blocks. I wanted half of the island to be fairly flat and the other half to have a larger hill with some cliffs around it with some mini spike rock things in the water below. But I wanted my house to be on top of that cliff overlooking the ocean. That was the plan, at least. And I thought that would be quite cool. In the background, throughout all of this, I have been taking the time to expand that massive wheat farm I built ages ago. And this was the last time I had to harvest to fully finish off the farm. Oh my gosh, that looks so cool. It's gonna look so much better when it's all fully grown. Yeah, that looks good. That took two hours, by the way. <laughs> For the very brief time I spent back at the base, there were still so many slime. Oh my gosh, there's so many slime. What am I looking at? So now I need to plan out where I want everything to go. I know I want a house, probably on that hill. I also want a wheat farm, probably along this side here somewhere. I've also been thinking of a name. I want to call this place the Slimeless Sanctuary. Throughout the entirety of this so far, I have been tormented by slime. All the big ones, medium sized and the little ones, just jumping around, being annoying, hitting me. But here, there's nothing. It's peaceful. It's slimeless. The first thing I did was mark out the outline for the house. From building the Emporium earlier, I realised I didn't have much choice for building blocks, so I went with oak logs as a frame and cobblestone for the walls. I tried experimenting with adding depth, but this was the best I could come up with. 
Yeah, that looked, that could look alright. After adding a roof, the house was done. Okay, uh, look, it looks okay. It looks okay. I still had the interior to do, but I was gonna leave that to last because I couldn't be bothered. But before I did any trees or paths or anything like that, I had to build everything I wanted, mainly a wheat farm. Boom, that is the wheat field done. That looks quite nice, I think. I quite like that. The one issue I had with this island was that below the island, mobs can spawn, and every so often I would have to break into the side of the cliffs and see where mobs were spawning. I would fix it by killing and placing torches where they spawned. Every time I did this, less and less mobs spawned until it was completely safe. Once that was done, I could decorate the area with everything I wanted. I made paths connecting the wheat farm to the house and to what will soon be a dock. I then went around the paths with fences and leaves. Gosh, that looks so much nicer. Just adding some leaves makes it look so much better. Once I knew where the paths were and was happy with them, I started planting and growing some big trees. There you go. Whoa, that's a big tree. Holy moly. I said earlier, each time I ran out of supplies, I had to leave the island, get the stuff I needed, and on my way back, I could see the island grow and look better each time. <laughs> Oh, this base looks so good! From the mob farm, I got some bones to turn into bone meal to get grass and flowers, really finishing off the main part of the island. Oh, this is so cool. I'm so happy with this. It looks so good. As I said earlier, I had fully covered the underneath of the island with torches, and it completely prevented mobs from spawning down there, but not on the surface, meaning at night it could be really deadly. So, I put down a ton of torches on the fences and in hidden places that, unless you were looking for them, you hopefully wouldn't see. That was the idea, at least. The only way to test whether I had fully lit up the area well enough was to wait until the night and see if anything spawned. No mobs spawn. It looks pretty bright, a bit dark on that corner there, but... I was right, that was the only area that had a mob spawn. While it was night, I went around double checking everything was lit up, because it is quite difficult to tell in the morning, and nothing spawned. That's awesome, I'm very happy about that. All I had left was to make an interior for the house. Bam! So I think that's the interior done. We have a little bedroom area here, a little kitchen area over here, and I think it kind of suits the whole... 1.1 style of Minecraft. Like, the whole house feels basic and simple, which sounds like a bad thing, but I think it fits quite well. Also, this whole island looks so cool. I'm so happy with it. Particularly the wheat field. Like, I wasn't too sure what I was going to put here, and I was actually doubting making a wheat farm in the first place, but I'm glad I did, because it adds in a bit more colour that I think the island is kind of missing. So that's very good. Very happy with it. The name as well, the Slimer Sanctuary. It's so peaceful here. It's so nice. But there are some parts on the main part of this village I want to show you. But then we have where I spent the majority of my playthrough in this world. This little area of the village which I kind of boxed myself in right at the start and made this my home. This is the Emporium with every single block in the game. I did move a few things and take some things out. That's why there's some things missing. But yeah, this was really cool. I'm very glad I did this because it was very, very cool. There are two churches that like in this little area that I was planning on doing something with, but I never ended up doing anything. There was also- <laughs> there was also a few villagers in here as well that were just stuck. I don't know if they can get out. I would let them, but they seem to be quite happy in there, so I'll leave them to it. But this was the main house. I took the, one of the blacksmiths over. I did originally have a bed in here, but I ended up moving out into this place over here, just because there were less mobs that spawned for some reason in the back than over there. I don't know why. Then we have the enchanting table. This was really cool. Very happy I got this. I didn't think I was actually able to make this in this version of Minecraft. Like, I didn't think diamonds were even a thing when I first made this. So that was cool, making that. Then, of course, we have the nether portal. But over here, we have the attempt at making a villager breeder, which really didn't work very well. I should really let these guys out. They've been stuck here the, the entire playthrough, pretty much. But then we have my magnum opus. Oh my gosh, look at this wheat field. It looks so cool. And I spent such a long time making this, trying to make it all grow. It's so cool, very satisfying. Then we have the sheep and pigs. I was gonna try to get cows, but for some reason, no cows spawned, which was quite weird. But, you know, I might let these guys out. They've been stuck in here for a while. I, I, I might as well make them free, and also the pigs as well. There you go, you're free! But I am actually really happy with this world. If I go to my statistics, you can see, I didn't spend too long on the game, like only, oh, how long is that? 19 hours, is that, I think? And when you put it like that, I haven't spent that long on the world, but I've done quite a lot. But the main thing I'm happy with, and it looks so cool from here, is the island. Like, it looks... It looks cool. So yeah, that was the world. I had a lot of fun making this. Also, subscribe and skibbity out. Was that cringe? I don't know, that might have been. I probably shouldn't have said that. <sighs> this is why I don't have a girlfriend.